Y'all, let me um send out a message. Welcome. Let me send out a message and let my people know that I'm on here. If you're not a part of my tribe and you want to be a part of the tribe, send an invitation to become a member to newverselive.com and you'll get messages whenever I go live. And so I'm going to run through some information and this just might be the most profound thing that you ever heard. Welcome, Larry. Welcome, Abdul. Jawad. Welcome. If you're religious, you're not going to want to hear what I'm saying. Unless your soul is ready to awaken. If you are open-minded, you're going to want to hear what I'm saying. If your third eye is open, you're going to want to hear what I'm saying. If your soul is ready to regather all of its fragments, because we have all suffered soul loss, that's why we're here in this time frame, you're going to want to hear what I'm saying. Whether you want to hear it or not, it's up to you. Click off if you don't want to hear it, but I'm not using any filters today because I have watered down my messages to try to avoid offending people or confusing people. And for the people who are ready for this, you're ready for this. And that's, you know, that's just what it is. Um, but I'm someone who has been called to be an oracle of the 3D matrix to guide souls who are ready to awaken and leave the false womb matrix. I'm not someone who's gonna talk about things that you have already heard before over and over again, nor am I someone that follows other people's consciousness. I am a revolutionary, I am a visionary, I'm a very old soul, and I have died twice. I've been on my deathbed more times than I can count, and every time they told me it was nothing that could be done, I pulled through. And every time my blood was infected by staph infections, gram negative, gram positive, I pulled through. Every time my organs fail, I pulled through, all right? So, when you're listening to me, you're not listening to somebody who read a bunch of spiritual shit. So that's what we're doing. Welcome. I was sitting here. First of all, I call upon all ancestors. I call upon all spirit guides who are assisting us in this journey. This is a very difficult school. Earth is one of the most difficult schools in the universe. And for the souls who are meant to hear this message, may they find this message. I give thanks for those that walk before us. I give thanks for the wisdom that we are now tapping into. I give thanks for those that we don't even know have been protecting us, assisting us, and helping us. I give thanks for the ability to have a sovereign mind. I give thanks for the ability to remember who we are, remember our power, and call our power back to us. I give thanks. Ashe, namaste, numiste. First of all, let me say this. For those of us who are empaths and we feel like we've been through a lot, but we don't feel like it's a lot of people that we can call on, that's protection for you. Okay, that's protection for you. I want to explain to you the power of a human being. And I'm going to make this as simple as I possibly can. Every human being on this planet has a quantum computer in, in between their two ears, in their mind, your brain. Every human being on this planet can time travel through the information streaming through thoughts of consciousness. Every human being on this planet has 72,000 circuits within their body that is always conducting energy. Every human being on this planet has at least seven chakras, which are energy vortex centers and wheels that hold, gather, and record information from many incarnations across past lives. Every human being on this planet is a transmitter 
of information. Every human being on this planet is a broadcaster of vibrations. Every human being on this planet has not one soul, but three. And two of those souls exist within our feet, keeping us tethered to Mother Earth to have this experience. Every human being on this planet has DNA. And within that DNA are many codes that have yet to be unlocked that are now being unlocked. Every human being on this planet that has neuromelanin, this is the darker melanin, EU melanin. We have great capacities to conduct energy. It's no different than the difference between gold and silver, copper and steel. Everything is able to move energy, but some beings can transmit more energy than others. Every human being on this planet has six subtle bodies. You do not just have one body, you have six subtle bodies. Every human being on this planet has connections to multiple dimensions. Every human being on this planet is not just here in this time and space, but is also existing somewhere else. So what does this mean? Why is this science, which is spirituality, important? It's important because we also was given a heart. And within that heart, we have the capacity to transmit energy miles away from where we physically are located. This is the reason that our heart has been crushed over and over again, because there is a force on this planet that knows the power of the human heart. Many of us do not operate from the space of our heart. Many of us have been hurt so many times, we stop feeling our own feelings so that we could get through life. We try to numb ourselves to deal with the things that we were experiencing. Many of us are star seeds who actually have galactic origins in other star systems before we incarnated into a physical body on earth. Because of that, we are hypersensitive to energy. Because of that, we have premonitions because of that. We dream things before they happen and they actually happen because of that. Spirits have hung around us since we were babies because of that. We were bullied by people because our frequency was admitting something that made people uncomfortable who are not meant to awaken in this incarnation because of that. We sign soul contracts to enter into this planet with families that has dysfunction on top of dysfunction so that we could be the ones to become the chosen ones who are the curse breakers. Because of that, we incarnated to learn what it is we do not want to be to figure out who it is we are. Every human being on this planet that resonates with people like me, who are teaching from this space of spirituality, it is because you are called to be the generational curse breaker. How do you do that? Most people don't know. Even before I knew how to do it, I knew I was supposed to do it. So because of these things, some of us have the ability to absorb energy. X-Men was not something that was made up. Truth is always stranger than fiction. The truth is, we have the ability to destroy just as we have the ability to heal. The truth is, when we don't know how to process our emotions in a proper way, the conductivity of the 72,000 meridians within our body do damage multi-dimensional damage. Many of us who have children have damaged our children significantly because we were trying to raise them with what we were taught. Many of us who did not resonate with religion because something felt a little traumatic about a father who would allow his son to be murdered, not painlessly, but in the most painful way possible. And we were told, you must 
believe that this is the definition of love between a parent and child. Many of us experience religious trauma, not because we did something wrong, not because the people that raised us were bad people, not because it was something about us and we just had to suffer because we're victims to life. That's not the reason. You were meant to experience the pain because pain is one of the most powerful energies to be used to be converted into purpose and power. Every song that we have ever listened to that touched us, it came from pain. The wisdom of many ancient texts, it came from pain. Many of the things that we wear and use, somebody had to go through something to invent it and create it. The programs on this planet, the indoctrination, the educational system, the things that we have been fed, we can just start with glutamate. The way glutamate inhibits brain development, that alone short-circuited our ability to connect with both right and left hemispheres of the brain. School taught us to depend on logic and reason and to ignore intuition and instincts. The patriarchal system taught us that the feminine and embodiment in the physical body is not worthy to be trusted. She's a whore. She's evil. She's manipulative. She's a Jezebel. She's controlling. She will destroy you. There are beliefs on this planet that women are destructive and we are the ones that come here to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I'm not. I'm not those things. You don't even know me. You don't know me. Women are rising up. We don't even realize how much trauma this planet has actually witnessed. We don't realize how much blood has been shed all in the name of money, power, and religion. This ain't for everybody because I understand pain. For me, religion was an opioid. It helped to numb some of what I was going through. When I was getting abused and I didn't understand why, when I was outcasted, treated like a black sheep, scapegoated, blamed for everything, expected to carry everybody's problems and fix it for them. I didn't understand why. And I did the best that I could. So for me, prayer and going to church and listening to gospel music, it was all that I had ever been offered in this incarnation. So I didn't know anything else. I was afraid. I was afraid of what would happen if I went against the beliefs that everybody else around me was believing. But I did not see anything happening in the people's lives around me that seemed like something I wanted in my life. So I began to ask questions. And in 2005, I had severe organ failure, multi, multiple organs, and I died. And I went to what we call hell. And I was there for a long time. They said that I only flatlined for seconds, but it felt like I was there for days. And I took a tour on every level of hell. And there were 11 levels. And on each level, the people that were there, they were there because they felt like something was wrong with them. They felt like they needed some type of external source of validation to approve their existence. That's what tethers people to have a hellish experience. Hell is not a place we seek to avoid that comes in the afterlife. We're in the afterlife. You had a life before this life. Hell is the way that we think. And the reason that it's torture is because no one else can hear what's being broadcast inside of your mind. So nobody can come and save you. 
Nobody hears the way that you criticize yourself. So nobody can come and save you. People won't even have compassion for you because they don't know what's going on inside of you. Hell exists within the mind. Also within the mind is the Ark of the Covenant. And in the Ark of the Covenant is access to enlightenment, which is considered to be heaven. So all of these things are accessible through the streams of consciousness, the mindsets that we practice, the thoughts that we think. Our mind alone is capable of growing new neural synapses. This is how you cancel out old behavior and get rid of habits and addictions. You have to be willing to think different. You have to be willing to make new decisions and act different. So I'm here to tell you, hell is not a place that you can avoid. Hell is your vibration. Now, in 2009, four years later, I died again. And this time I went to what we call heaven. And there, it's a total different experience. There was no judgment. I no longer had the ability to remember the horrible things that happened to me. And I could not feel any pain. And I didn't want to leave. Never in my life have I had a day with absolutely no pain. I have felt pain in my body every single day of my life. And for most of my life, I could not communicate it to anybody. For most of my life, I was bullied and picked on and jumped because of it. I'm someone who grew up in the hood, some of the worst hoods in Memphis, and I survived. I'm someone that has survived things that a lot of people have yet to experience. I've seen a lot of things. And in my witnessing, Throughout life, the amount of pain and trauma that humans go through, I wanted to understand why. What is the purpose? Why am I still here? Why did I come back to this physical body where I knew I would suffer, but I came back anyway? And it was because I saw faces, millions of faces of people that I would speak to, that I would touch, that I would awaken, that I would shake to come out of the false womb matrix. And in this false womb matrix, we're constantly being drugged. We're being drugged with anger. Anger is addictive. It's just as addictive as cocaine. Anger sometimes cuddles you. Sometimes anger is the only thing that make you feel your own power, help you be assertive enough to speak your mind. But see, that's the old earth way. We don't need to be angry to speak our mind. They say that a drunk man speaks a sober man's words. Well, why do we have to be drunk to speak our truth? So we've been constantly drugged. We've been constantly put under some type of sleep, some type of hypnosis of substances. All of the advertisement is because they study neurolinguistics and they figure out ways to tap into the mind of people subliminally so they have no idea that they are being programmed. It's in the music. It's the food. It's the water. It's the fluoride. The pineal gland is calcified. And now we have this new thing happening on the planet, which is really not new. It is a very ancient thought form. I.A ancient thought form. It's an, a form of artificial intelligence, artificial intimacy. And with this being on this planet right now, many people will not survive their own mind. Are you listening to me? Every crime that happens on this planet begins with instability in the mind, body, and spirit. You cannot separate one from the other. This is what we fail to realize. We fail to realize the purpose of pain. 
we talk about being generational curse breakers, but a lot of us are not doing the work because we don't know where to start. And once you get started, that ancient wickedness that seeks to suppress us so that we incarnate with amnesia over and over again in the form of a helpless baby born into a family that you don't even have say so over. You cannot tell me that earth was not meant to be a form of hell. That a child has to come here and a child has to deal with whatever is happening in their household. And if it's happening in the hands of the parents, who go save the child? That's a lot of pressure for a child. That's a lot of pressure for a baby. The first touch that we feel when we come into this world is in something called a hospital. Hospitals are created to siphon life force energy, to be a part of the economy of the souls being traded on the cosmic market. And so the first thing that many of us felt entering into this world was being smacked on our ass. Yeah. That's how you come here. That's what you get first. That's the first touch that you receive. So the trauma begins early. We have these bright lights, fluorescent hmm, lights. How is that affecting organic beings to this planet? Right? We're separated from our mothers. Our mothers were taught to let the baby cry because that's what you're supposed to do. Don't pick the baby up. Don't go and see what the baby need. Just let the baby cry. Put the baby in a crib all by itself. You really should sleep in another room and let the baby cry. This is what we were taught to do with our children. And we wonder why the world looks like this. I never let my children cry. And whenever they needed me, I was making sure that I was going to be there as much as possible. And I had doctors and nurses telling me at the hospital, it's not healthy for you to pick your baby up every time your baby cries. It's the most insane, psychopathic, narcissistic programming I had ever witnessed being done to a child, all in the name of someone who's taken the Hippocrates oath, shall we say the hypocrite's earth oath, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's what we had to go through. And that's what we were taught to do. And then before we even get the baby home, dysfunction and trauma, a spiritual entity that brings wickedness is already at play. And this is just one level of the 3D matrix and the way it breaks us before we get to develop our ego, which takes seven to eight years. But that first seven to eight years of your life, you are in full theta state. You are absorbing energy. You Then you shift into a delta brainwave state. So you are very absorbent during those years. Even the things that you don't remember that occurred affected you. So people would tell kids, you know, you need to be put on medication. You ADHD, you this, you that. We was traumatized. Yeah. So we went from the hospitals and then they put us on this, this pipeline to schools. And in the schools, the spiritual things that we really should have been learning, we did not. No, but we were taught to use our left brain to be logical and reason. Spirituality cannot be done without the right hemisphere of the brain. So we were cut off from spirit. We were forced to lay our hand over our heart and pledge allegiance to something we knew not. To a flag that was created with blood. Much of it blood of the indigenous to this earth. And when you pledge allegiance to something that was used to spill blood, you by default are creating consent to experience the karma of those that took place, those that were participants in these places and things that occurred. So the ley lines and the grid system of your energetic system is now intermingled. Remember, I taught y'all about the 72,000 circuits within every human body. 
So now we got blood on our hands and we ain't even in kindergarten yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then from that point, we enter into a situation where there was corporal punishment. So people that weren't even your kin could put their hands on you and it was considered to be the thing that you should do. And even that book that many of us were raised to believe was the only instruction that that's necessary for living life on earth. That book said that if you spare the rod, you're going to spoil your child. So now we got whooped by a doctor that we didn't even know when we was first born. We got whooped by teachers and principals, didn't even know him. We was getting whooped at home, popped in the head with us, just popped in the head with pressing combs. And this was considered normal. And we wonder why the world look like it does today. And not only that, but we were forced to eat food that I don't believe should have even been fed to pigs. Chemicals masquerading as food, damaging our neurotransmitters, damaging our hormonal systems. So this is why I have nothing to say about people whose sexuality is anything other than heterosexual. I think that it's very arrogant of us to look down on people because of the choices that they make as adults. Especially if you have not done research and you know nothing about gender bending chemicals. In the baby formula, it started real early. Especially if you know nothing about the true practices of monotheistic religion being centered around sexual practices, being centered around things like a rabbi putting a baby's penis in his mouth for the ceremonial circumcision. But we see nothing wrong with that because it's all in the name of God. Now, I'm not saying that I know a lot about it. It's just what I heard. This is just what I have observed. And just in case the 3D matrix had not done enough to traumatize you so that you could not be the generational curse breaker that your soul contracted for you to be, just in case that wasn't enough, we also had a book telling us that every despicable thing that you see in this world was created by a woman. And her name was Eve. And every curse, every pain, every negative thing you ever experienced was because of this woman. Oh, I'm just getting started. See, y'all getting a free metaphysical lecture today. I just got started. Because how does that impact the psyche of a little girl? She's automatically going to think something is wrong with her. Because she has the same body as Eve. And unfortunately, a lot of people are not ready for the truth that will actually set them free. And this is the truth. That's not okay. It's nothing beneficial about that. It's nothing beautiful about that. And we wonder where gaslighting comes from for those of us studying narcissism. And this is when you're blamed for something that you really didn't do. Now, why would God gaslight? And why would he agree with Adam? Because Adam didn't take any accountability. And I'm using this story because almost every human being on this planet has heard this story. Whether you believe it or not, you've heard it, which means it went into your subconscious mind, which means it affects the way you perceive life, whether you want it to or not, until you do a detox of these programs. So how does that make a man feel about a woman when he grow up, when he remembers this? When he feels like he's going through the same thing Adam went through because he got a disobedient woman. 
And we wonder why so many women are being unalived. The roots of that go back eons. The roots of that hatred. And it's just hurt people hurting people. But why didn't Adam take accountability? Why didn't Adam say, you know what? But Eve then put a gun to my head and put that in my mouth. God, so punish me too. Nah, that's not how that went. God and Adam were both in agreement that Eve should be the one to take the full punishment and be to blame for the curse. And we wonder why our relationships are struggling. If you went through any religious programming and you have not questioned it, researched it, and released it, it's going to negatively affect the way that you perceive women and men. Do you know why children get molested? Do you know why women in relationships don't even have permission to say no when it comes to sex? Do you know why? Because that same book says that in Corinthians, that you cannot withhold your body from each other because Satan is going to get a foothold in your relationship. There are women who have pain when they have sex and men use Corinthians on them. Do you know how much trauma that creates? See, sometimes we're afraid to question things because it's just been what we are used to believing for so long. That creates trauma. And I know a lot of people not ready to hear that. But a lot of people are. A woman should have the right to do what she want to do with her body. And her partner should not have the right to tell her when and when not to open her legs for him. I stand on that. And you will never hear me say anything different. Because as long as the womb space of the woman is being abused, taken advantage of, and traumatized, guess what? The morphogenic field created by emotions, thoughts, and experiences around a woman impacts everybody. Because we are the portals that connect sky to earth. The mythology of Newt, Geb, Isis, all of these goddesses was teaching us the spiritual mechanism of a woman. So how can a book tell two people what they should and should not be doing in their bedroom? See, this creates trauma. Religious trauma is the reason a lot of us have mental illnesses. It's also the reason a lot of us don't get better. Because most people are not going to say the things that I'm saying. For one, you don't want people to look down on you. You don't want to be rejected. You don't want to seem like a Satanist. Because anybody that believes something different than monotheistic religion is considered evil. But if we went and got our children and let them be beat publicly and say that all of this trauma is necessary for deliverance, people will call us evil. But that's what God did. We got to get to the root. And this ain't for everybody. Some people need to be religious to survive. Some people cannot survive life without somebody telling them what to do every day. And I get that. I used to be her. I studied that book better than a lot of ministers. I sat out and talked to pastors in many different denominations before I made the decision to detox those beliefs. 
And as I began doing that, my life got better and better and better. My spiritual hearing and my spiritual eyesight got stronger and clearer. I have healed diseases in my own body that are supposed to be incurable. And I have also healed others. So I know that this is not for everybody, but for who it's for? Oh, it's a lot of power when you realize that you are a sovereign soul that cannot ever be destroyed. Energy simply takes on a new form. There's power in just knowing that. The second thing, reprogramming your subconscious mind, changing what you're eating, what you're consuming, changing what you invest your energy to. There's a spirit inside of people that when you start to awaken and when you start to pull away from things that are toxic, people will do everything they can to make you feel guilty and keep you stuck. And it's not personal. This is a spiritual warfare. We have been programmed to be crabs in the bucket. It's ironic that when someone is tapping into the wisdom of their ancestors, the spirituality of their ancestors, that they're called demonic. Why do you think that happens? What is it so demonic about using your words and herbs and crystals and minerals of the planet and working with nature to heal? What's demonic about that? See, we're not meant to be like everybody else. And the frequency on the prison planet is set up to alert NPCs. These are people who kind of just play a role on the planet. It alerts people who are stuck or afraid to get free. And they actually will try to save you. They think they're saving you. I had so many people that tried to save me. Oh, she's on the dark side now. She's this, she that reaching out to me. And I was like, look, tell me how many times you died. None. Okay. When that happened, then we can have a conversation. Because I haven't been brainwashed. I started to show myself approved. And what I learned was the root of all suffering. And I vowed that I was going to share it with the world. See, let me tell y'all something. When you start breaking free, free from generational curses, there is a program in the DNA where is the people are going to do everything they can to keep you in the frequency with them because that's where they've been. So they think it's safe. They think that that is the only way to be safe. And so I'm not saying that you need to be rah, rah all the time and cause a ruckus, but your spiritual journey is your spiritual journey. And you are a sovereign being. You walk the path that you feel resonates with your soul. They will have their own time. We all set an alarm clock in our soul to wake us up. And so we're all awakening on different levels at different times. Nobody is wrong. Nobody is right. It just is what it is. So I'm going to read something to y'all just for a second. Because I wasn't sure that I was going to talk about trauma, sexual trauma, what happens to children, women. Because that list goes on and on. And, and when you take it out of the context of how it has been taught to us, you can see how it can create mind, body, spirit, disease. So to take a little girl who's a virgin and tell her that this man that lives in the sky, grown man that lives in the sky is her groom and she's married to him. And in order for her to not go to hell, she must become a believer. So she has to take a vow and she has to pledge her allegiance and accept the mind 
of this being into her mind and she has to completely forsake her own feelings because the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know the heart but God? So if my heart is wicked, I can't trust my heart. And this was the shift where we were placed into a spell of ego, which is based in the mind. So our ability to connect to love in our heart was cut off. Why would you call the heart wicked? Because the mind definitely can be wicked, right? So as a little girl, you don't trust your feelings. You don't trust your heart. You got a man up in heaven. You still a virgin and you need to keep it that way. That's traumatic. Especially when that little girl learns what a husband and a wife supposed to do. It's confusing. These are 3D matrix programs. So I'm not speaking against people or people that still teach these things. But I'm speaking to the system that we were raised in. God commanded women to be submissive because they're weaker. They're the weaker vessel. So they have to always stand behind their man. Well, now we see a lot of men are not fit to lead a household because they're, they don't have the emotional intelligence to do so. They're disconnected from their heart. They're disconnected from their feelings. And I already told y'all how some of that occurred. If men are truly the heads of household, then why are they not being held accountable for the chaos we see in the world? Now, if a woman is a weaker vessel and she's only supposed to stand behind a man, be submissive and follow him, pimps do the same thing. Pimps command women to walk behind them. They got to submit or they're going to suffer the consequences. Pimps tell their hoes to look down and don't catch feelings or they'll suffer punishment. Well, we were told not to trust our feelings because the heart is deceitfully wicked and that can be misleading. And we wonder why we have difficulty being emotionally intimate and vulnerable. Because a lot of us don't trust ourselves. We were never taught to trust our own internal guiding system, our own higher self, our divine self, or re innermost being, the part of you that has already went through all of these experiences. God allowed Tamar to be raped. She was a virgin. And after she got raped, she was unworthy to be married. This sounds like trauma to me. And nobody interceded. Nobody did anything to help Tamar. Now, pimps know that hoes could get in situations like rape, but they make them work anyway. And the woman ends up feeling unworthy of being loved. Do you see this design, this blueprint? It's the same. These instructions are the same. But see, we dare not question. The generations before us got beat. Maybe even some of us for asking questions, just for asking questions, because you're not supposed to question God. God is all knowing. So why am I not asking questions? Because I perish for lack of knowledge. But if that's true, why is there an angel in front of the tree of life in the garden of Eden so that I don't gain more knowledge? Why was Adam and Eve forbidden from eating from the tree of knowledge and the tree of life if we are supposed to learn so that we do not perish for lack of knowledge? See, when you have streams of consciousness that negate each other, it creates mental illness and mental instability. It creates confusion and a lack of clarity. God also commanded that fathers sell their daughters to the highest bidder, even if they didn't want to marry the man. It's called a dowry. It sounds like trauma to me. They are also expected to consummate. The word consummate 
C-O-N-S-U-M-M-A-T-E is two words together. Consume, mate. So the feminine energy on this planet has been consumed within these doctrines. Oftentimes they would stand outside while they were having sex for the very first time to make sure that blood was shed from the hymen. I mean, this does sound like blood magic, does it not? To seal the deal. Once he sold his daughter, this is considered righteous. If they got caught in a lie, they were severely shamed and punished. But we know now that the hymen can stretch from riding horses. It could tear doing any type of physical activity. We know how hard women and even young girls worked back then. Cycling, swimming. So what sense did that really make? How many little girls were murdered because they did not bleed when they lost their virginity back then? And not every female is born with an intact hymen. So all women do not bleed when they lose their virginity. But let's talk about hymen. H-Y-M-E-N. Listen to these words. We, I just went from mate. Okay, now we add men, the hymen, the origin, 1610 from French word hymen, from the medical word Latin, ultimately from Greek hymen, meaning the membrane, membrane, especially virginal membrane as the membrane par excellence, a thin skin from pi, P-I-E, synonym, from the root su, S-Y-U, which means to bind, to bind. So this was binding virgin daughters to these men that they didn't even know for a price. And we wonder why children get molested. Now, how many is, is a Hellenistic religion and it's a God of marriage and ceremonies. Among the Romans, and we know Rome created a lot of these um, standards to live by. And in this custom, um, it was Vogue is what it was called, but the song was sung by girls only after the marriage guests had gone and it contained much more of what modern attitudes would identify as obscene. You can look it up. This is what little girls had to sing after this happened. More trauma. How many females, we can shift to medical. How many females was forced to get pap smears? How many females who parents, whoever raised them, thought they was having sex was suspicious and sometimes they wasn't took them to the doctor, forced them to have a huge piece of metal, cold metal shoved up inside of them by a stranger to determine whether or not they were virgins. Religious households, it was the worst. Do you see the connection? Trauma is trauma. It don't matter in what name is being done. So now we have Karma being created by mothers who have traumatized their daughters. And then if they found out they were not virgins, a lot of times they got a whooping when they got home. But these exams cannot prove whether or not you're a virgin because, again, the hymen is not intact in all girls. And it can be torn by many other things other than sex. We can talk about Rahab, Rahab. Y'all remember Rahab? Mm -hmm. she, she needed a man. Yeah. And she used the ritual and perfumes to be able to seduce, to get a husband. But magic is wrong and is bad and is evil. But whenever you combine certain cosmetics, certain fragrances at certain times of the day in certain manners, that's what you call a magical ceremony. It's really just spirituality. All right. 
let's talk about David. Let's go back to religion because most of us have been traumatized by religion and it's just not something that is okay for us to talk about usually. And so in this sacred space, I like to open up dialogue about things that have affected us really deeply because you carry this pain with you until you work through it and heal. But King David, he was the peeping Tom. And not only was he a peeping Tom watching a woman while she was bathing, but he murdered her husband, who was a soldier serving to protect their land, set him up to be killed. And after he did all of that, the God of the Bible said, this is a man out of God's own heart. Now, why didn't he get blamed and punished like Eve did when she just ate some fruit, right, in the story? See, this is the patriarchy. When matrilineal was proven to be a powerful way to create peaceful societies, they knew that getting rid of that was going to be necessary to oppress people and have dominion over people. No wonder we are experiencing dysfunctional relationships. Believing that these systems of power set up, and I've named them all. I'm not singling out any of it. If it creates trauma, it creates trauma. Believing that these systems and these gods and these people, they care for us, despite these psychopathic experiences, is freakishly similar to Stockholm Syndrome and Monarch MK Ultra programming. Creating feelings of trust towards those that are our programmers and captors, our oppressors. This is a form of collective gaslighting, manipulation tactics to intimidate, which means to be stuck in timidness. And this is why a lot of us cannot be intimate with one another. Intimacy is difficult. And this was all done to gain control using the psychological mind games, which often causes us to have cognitive dissonance. To have a strong bias to information. And we won't even listen to certain people talk about things unless it's already in alignment with what we believe, but we expect to grow. It can't happen like that. So these thoughts, these beliefs, these value systems, the attitudes, especially relating to the way we relate in relationships are all based in trauma. Once you clear your attachment to trauma, the relationships that were sustained by the traumatic resonance will begin to evaporate from your life. I did see a comment. Somebody said, well, how do you detox this? How do you pull yourself out of the 3D matrix? I'm going to, I'm going to get into a little bit of that. And this is something that I wrote 11, 21, 21. Once you are no longer a magnetic match to trauma, you may even lose attraction to someone that is stuck in their own traumas. This includes romantic relationships, biological family systems, work relationships, and relationships with certain aspects of yourself. This magnetism can be revived only when the other person decides to write their own narrative, create beliefs that are non-toxic, integrating with their shadow selves, getting to know their demons. Demons? I thought you said it wasn't demonic. See, we've been so confused with the English language was created to create confusion. Babylon, Babel keeps us in a baby minded state. Now, everything has more than one reason, more than one meaning for existing because everything is everything. But I'm going to just keep you right here and just say, if you look up the word D-A-E-M-O-N, when you look up the etymology, it's the part of you that's a genius. It has nothing to do with you being evil. Okay. So when you get to know your own darkness, you will see that it was a lot of genius in the ego that you created to protect yourself. 
Let's just say you happen to be the kind of person that get defensive easily. Well, you could look at that as a shadow aspect of yourself. And some people would say that it's evil, but it was something that protected you. Maybe you shut down and go into freeze or fawn mode and you start people pleasing when you don't feel safe. Well, it was something that protected you. Maybe you lie because you don't want people to reject and abandon you. Well, at one point in time, that was something that protected you. We created these maladaptive ways of dealing with trauma on this planet and drama when we were children. Nobody ever pulled us aside and said, hey, some of the ways that you cope with what you was going through from the womb to age eight is still playing in the background of your subconscious mind. And you're going to want to cancel that so that you can create your own reality. So that's what I mean when I say that. There is a hole inside the soul from being disconnected from our authentic selves as a result of things like toxic shame. And this connects you to narcissists. This connects you to people who will come into your life and will only take energy and will not know how to reciprocate or may know how and won't do it. Because if a person inherently feel like they're living in lack in any shape, form or fashion, and they don't know that God, goddess, divinity is within, they're going to seek to get it from external sources. So for those of us who are intuitive, empathic, soft-hearted, hypersensitive to energy, um, maybe became codependent to deal with our own traumas, we're the type of people that they're going to reach out to. This is a form of psychic unconscious vampirism. It's a form of manipulation subconsciously that siphons energy through getting your attention because energy goes wherever attention flows. And one of the things that a lot of us did was we created relationships where we expected the person we're in a relationship with to fill these voids inside of us, to make us feel confident. Some of us been numb so long that we needed somebody to make us feel something, even if it was toxic. Like most humans would rather have negative energy, negative attention than none. Because as children, we threw tantrums because we were trying to get attention. We was trying to be acknowledged. We was trying to be loved. We was trying to be seen. We were trying to be heard. And the amygdala becomes overreactive. This, this part of the brain at the back becomes overreactive. And you get stuck in that reactive state. And so throughout your whole life, you don't even know that you're hyper reactive because you're still stuck in that state of not feeling safe. Nervous system is no longer flowing the way that it's supposed to. So remember, you are just like a 5G tower. You are a tower of energy and you're always broadcasting. And so if your internal dialogue that you have not yet learned how to program and reprogram and detox, if you are a vibrational match to narcissists, they are going to be attracted to you and they will not leave your life. Relationships that were created in ego, because if you created a relationship while you were not feeling safe, not feeling whole, how are, how are you going to expect your partner to reflect those things back to you? You see, the universal laws don't care who you is. It just is what it is. Like attracts like. So we created a false self. This is the you that smile and say you okay when you really not. This is the you that don't let people know how you really feeling because you're not used to people being loving towards you for being honest. So we created an avatar. These avatars we got now on the internet, this is not where it started. It started in this simulated reality we live in that we call life. All right. So I'm not going to read through the rest of this because it's a lot and I've been on here for a while. But what inspired me to do this tonight? First of all, we just went through another 1111 portal. If you're new to that, just do some research about 1111 and see what it means. 
So what inspired me to do this is this. A lot of us resonate with the fact that we do feel like something is changing within us. A lot of us do resonate with information that talks about these superhuman abilities. A lot of us were inspired when we watched Black Panther and we started to see the ways where we had spiritual power as well. A lot of us are excited about the fact that learning about your heritage is connecting you to certain spiritual practices. A lot of us are excited about the fact that we are becoming more um, telepathic and psychic and clairvoyant, clairsentient, and clairaudient. And, and we're learning how to experience energy and create energy, create our own vibe, right? Create our life. A lot of us are excited about that. A lot of us get excited about learning that the sun being in its sixth solar cycle is activating us with energy to become a better version of ourselves. What people are not talking about is the problem. And that's this. When your body starts to hold a higher frequency, when your body is transmitting more light energy, light is information. There is a responsibility that comes with that. The negative thoughts that you used to think before you started getting these upgrades, maybe they would only create two or three negative outcomes. Now it's creating 20,000 outcomes. How long you sit in it more. Because we have been denied understanding the six subtle bodies, we don't know that our emotional body, our mental body, our etheric body is transmitting this energy and information. And so a lot of people have been destroying whole ecosystems by mismanaging their emotions. A lot of us have been destroying our own bloodline by mismanaging our children and the way that we parent them. A lot of us have been actually a part of what's creating the chaos and the hatred, the pain and the murder on the planet. Because when we get angry, we take it out on people who are in weaker, lower, on the hierarchy with us. And that could be your children. For some people, that could be men with their women. Remember the weaker vessel thing? And so when you don't know how to channel that emotion, that energy in motion is going to reverberate like ripples in the ocean and it's touching things that you don't even know exist. If we are indeed spiritual beings, that also means simultaneously as we're sitting here in this time space continuum, there's a version of you that made different decisions that is in a parallel universe and you're also affecting that. Not only that, but time is not linear. Time is radial. Time is spiral, which means a lot of us, our ancestors came through us as our children because we're being given the opportunity to do things better. And so when you are not able to emotionally regulate yourself, you're doing a lot of damage in realms and worlds that you can't even see. So it's beautiful that people are now resonating with being a God and being a goddess and I am the creator of my own reality. And so I would ask you, if the thoughts that you think that nobody else know that you think was on the billboard, would you be proud of what you see? And if every billboard is what's broadcasted in that city, in that town, what type of vibration would that city and town have based on the thoughts that you entertain? That's why we see so much chaos in the world. The world will not heal until we do. So I hope that from this message, if you don't get anything else, that you take your spiritual path, your personal journey of self-discovery and self-realization seriously. 
because we are the ones that have been projecting out a lot of pain and suffering by denying ourselves the right to walk our own authentic path. Allowing ourselves to be in relationships with certain conversations inside of our minds is broadcasting something that is actually causing more pain and suffering. A lot of us would benefit from not dating and until you really get to know yourself. Because if you're not at peace with yourself and you get in relationship with someone else, you're going to attract someone who has very similar subconscious energy as you, which means two people who do not feel whole, seeking to feel love because they don't know how to give it to themselves. They don't know that they're the source of every beautiful thing. And those two people come together and now you have 144,000 circuits in the same space broadcasting whatever it is that you're dealing with times at least a million watts. And we can get into the wattage of the heart, the wattage of the mind, the wattage of the nervous system. So you can see how we have been unconsciously, unintentionally doing a lot of damage. And this is why the world looks like this. It's not just they. And when we take responsibility for ourselves, the way that we treat ourselves, the way that we talk, the way that we think, the way that we love ourselves, how compassionate we are, you will start to create boundaries and you will say no more. I'm not doing that anymore. And you won't be afraid of people being upset with you anymore because you will finally know that your business is you. The version of you that live in other people's minds, that's their business. It ain't got nothing to do with you. You walk your path, walk your journey, whatever resonates for you. And if you have a family who believes something totally different than you, you don't have to confront them. You don't have to make them feel bad about what they believe. Even if you resonate and believe that what I have said to you actually created a lot of generational trauma, allow them to walk their own path because the mark of a truly spiritual person is someone who respects other people's beliefs even when they do not agree. And I have very good friends who are Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, and the love that we have for each other is greater than the difference in our beliefs. That is the new earth. Because division and this spiritual narcissism that we've been programmed to use, that's killing us. We're leaking our life force energy. And I could go on and on and on. But I will invite you I have 30 days where I give you one thing to do each day for 30 days to help you break free of the programming of this toxic culture. And that program is on my website, newverselive.com. And I know for so many of us, maybe we don't feel supported enough to fully step into our sovereign journey. And so I created this program with us in mind because I know how hard it can be to just live life and keep up with life. I'm someone who has been diagnosed with complex PTSD. I deal with depression, insomnia, chronic fatigue, and chronic pain. I ain't shame none of it because I'm a product of my environment. I'm a product of my epigenetics. And so my goal has been to use everything that I have learned to be able to reprogram people to tap into their own power. You can heal. You can heal yourself and you can heal other people. And the more that you embrace who you really are, the more that you are not afraid to stand out, that vibe will attract your soul tribe. People who won't judge you, people who won't make you feel guilty when you say no. 
See, if you got people in your life like that, that's a sign right there. That's, that's directing you to what it's time for. It's time for you to invest in yourself. What we spend our money on creates soul contracts as well. So if your money is being spent with companies and corporations who are behind some of the terrible things that have oppressed us and caused us to be sick and divided, well, wouldn't it make sense to use your money for programs and tools that are going to help you heal? Because when you heal, everything else in your reality does. And so this is how we create a new earth, a new paradigm where we operate different. The economy no, is no longer physical. The economy right now is energetic. It's emotional. And this is the reason why a billionaire could, used to, could probably get any woman that he wanted. I guarantee you it ain't like that no more. Because the physical is going away. If you are a vicious, narcissistic, cold, mean person, it's probably trauma that created that in you. And so it ain't going to matter how much money you got. The spiritual economy is what has risen. And people, you're going to see people go down. Maybe people who were always up. You're going to see them go down. Because if you are not living from your heart space, or at least are learning how to do that, then the energy that you are broadcasting will return to you. And it will return to you in many different forms. There are two earths simultaneously existing right now. And one is where people are having miracles, breakthroughs, prosperity, abundance, we have miracles that happen over here in our house almost every day. Things that sometimes I don't even believe. I'm like, wow, I'm amazed. But honestly, we shouldn't be amazed because what you invest in is what you get. And I invest in being a sacred rebel, providing sacred space. For people who are ready to detach themselves from teachings, beliefs, values, expectations of our society that has been creating generational trauma. And so the universe gives things to me because of that. And what I do is not easy. And a lot of people come for me. And there are a lot of people who wish bad things for me. But I'm protected. And I'm respected. Because I'm not doing anything for clout. And I'm not doing it just to give people money. So make sure that you figure out what it is that you are here to do. What you are passionate about. What you love to do. What lights your heart up. And do that. So that we can broadcast joy, peace, bliss, happiness. Because at some point... We're going to be responsible, not just for this land, the way our ancestors were. We're going to be responsible for the energy that we create everywhere we go. And even if your feet don't go there, if your mind thinking about a future moment, make sure that you're sending positive energy to that future moment instead of negative. A lot of us deal with anxiety and we think about catastrophic things that haven't even happened yet. And it's from trauma. This is how it affects the brain. And so when you're doing that, you're sending that traumatic negative energy into your own future timeline to re-experience. And so you're undoing the work that is naturally being done on us while we're sleeping. We're being healed while we're sleeping. Our ancestors are coming to us while we're sleeping. Our spirit guides, spirit animals, every spiritual, non-physical energy that is assisting us is helping us and so you don't want to time travel and make deposits of energy in your future because it's going to meet you when you get there so you practice you practice observing the mind not controlling the mind observe the mind 
because the mind is a river. It's always flowing. And much of what flows in and out of your mind is what's in the ethers, it's what's in the air. This is the Akashic record, the Akash. It is the fifth element. And for those of us who know we're called to be healers, you wanna spend more time with yourself, journaling, meditating, learning new things, walking barefoot outside, grounding yourself. Get a grounding sheet and put it on your bed. Put your phone on airplane mode at night because this energy, these low megahertz waves, they do interfere with our spiritual mind by the spirit connection. And that's by design. But there's also an ancestral intelligence within each and every one of us from our descendants. And they're trying to send this information to us to help us the rest of this year, we will see many people fall. You will see it in people's appearance. You will see something changing. The people who are healers and who are tapping into the love frequency, they're not gonna age and you will see it. But the people who are not tapped into that energy and who are still being controlled and ruled by fear, you will also witness that. Neither is right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. There is what's beneficial and what's not. Because any human being that thinks that they knows what's right and wrong, you're already saying that you're God. And if your consciousness, your knowledge is limited, how do you know what's right and wrong? Because it's possible that something that was wrong that happened in your life actually put you on a path of wholeness. And this is why I do not teach right and wrong. It's what's useful and what's not, what's necessary and what must be let go of. And with this new moon energy that we're in, right after the huge eclipse that we got, many of us are being given an opportunity to create completely different lifestyles and realities. And that happens one day at a time one thought at a time, one emotion at a time, one word at a time, one action at a time. And once you find what resonates for you, make sure that you are devoting yourself to that. Take care of your temple. Take care of your physical body. Take care of your mind. Spend less time being busy and among a lot of people. In silence, you connect with yourself. And this is a really noisy world. And I'm a 70s baby. Wasn't as noisy as it is now. And so spending time in silence will rejuvenate you. And you may even just discover some things that you've been running from in yourself. You need to spend time with that. Learn how to experience your problems as portals to higher consciousness. Stop allowing people to make you responsible for their own toxic behavior you don't have to get into conversations with people it's totally okay for you to cut people out your life when you need to because that's self-love but because we have been programmed to be martyrs and sacrifice ourselves a lot of us don't know how to love ourselves and when you are loving you you are loving other people and we've been doing it in reverse so I'm going to share the links. The links should already be here. But if you want to get caught up, I've been teaching since I died that first time. If you want to get caught up, check out YouTube. I have over probably 5,000 videos of information that is constantly coming to me. And it's not for closed-minded people. Is for people who desire to be open-minded, desire to heal. And people get transformation that connect with this energy. If you've been on this journey and you want to get into shadow work, like I said, that program, the 3D Matrix Detox, is filled with shadow work exercises, meditations. I put at least 400 hours of blood, sweat, and tears into the 3D Matrix Detox course. And I have been paying to keep that course online for the last two years to give people time to work through it. And this will help you to be consistent. 
because it can be a lot. And when you start attracting this type of information and these types of people and channels, everybody has their own perspective about what you can be doing to heal. Um, so I studied all of these spiritual systems and I wanted to simplify it because I know how overwhelming it can be. And as an empath, I, I have to pull away from people. And I spend most of my time with myself because not only am I empathic, but I connect with other people's pain and my heart. I try to absorb that from them and it's subconscious. I don't even know I'm doing it sometimes. So people who are not working through their own trauma, like I don't spend a lot of time with them type of people because why would I? Nobody came and saved me, you know, and um, I've been very vulnerable and very open. I'm an open book. You'll never see a video about me being exposed. I'm not one of those spiritual teachers. I'm just somebody going through this ascension process and sharing along the way. And I happen to be an oracle. And so I do see multiple timelines. I can see into the future and I can see into past lives. So I do Akashic human life design readings where I help you to reshape your life and I tell you what your past life trauma is, what the genetic trauma is you incarnated to experience with your own biological family to heal. That's also on the website. And for those of you who maybe are not ready to invest your money into your journey, I post a whole lot of free content. You know, and most of the spiritual tools on the website are discounted significantly because if I don't do nothing else before I die again, because the next time that I die, I'm probably not going to come back. I want to leave this world better than what it was when I came in it. And I'm going to use every talent, every skill, every gift to be the embodiment of that. Um, and so I hope that. I'm inspiring somebody to see the beauty in you, in every aspect of you. Because the next time you see me, I might be cussing and acting hood and whatever. But the heart and the energy is always pure and it's always uplifting. Because I do the work. So if you want to get for real, for real, yeah, head over to Newverse Live. And the reason I call it Newverse is because once you start connecting with these energies... Your universe is going to shift and anybody, anything that's in your life that has been depriving you of your own divinity is going to be removed. And, um, you know, so you can read the testimonials and see what other people have experienced. But that's what we're doing in a new verse. Namaste, new mistake. One love. Ashe.